My name is Pete, and welcome to my garage. Okay, in order to get this intake uh, inlet tube off, what we have to do is we have to disconnect the intake air temp sensor and unclip the box here. This should pop out and this just pulls off. You gotta pull kind of hard and work it around. And then lift up on the box and these tabs should slide out of the slots there on the air filter. Now's a good time to check the air filter. This one looks good. And now we're ready to disconnect the throttle linkage and electrical connectors and fuel lines so we can get this upper intake off. In order to get these throttle cables off here, there's a little tab right here that we need to get a pocket screwdriver behind here, pull out very slightly, like so. At the back of the throttle here, you have this little tab. You just have to push that off of there. You can see it's slotted. Again, be very careful you don't break these. They're getting old and the plastic gets brittle. Now I need to do the same thing on this with the pocket screwdriver. This time, it's over on this side. Now the actual, the first one, this one right here, was for the cruise control cable. Now this one is for the actual throttle cable. And then you slide that cable right there out. Now your throttle cables are disconnected. Next, we need to unplug a whole bunch of these connectors and get the wiring off. We have the EGR valve, the fuel lines, we have the, the bracket that goes around the EGR valve. All these connections on the uh, throttle body from our mass airflow sensor. We have our idle air control and we have our throttle position sensor. Then we need to unplug all the injectors, the map sensor, and this upper intake thing can come off once we get the fuel rail off too. This purge valve comes off easily. There's a little bracket behind it. You kind of got to pry a little bit to to get it to let loose. You also need to unplug it. Be careful with a lot of these connections. At this age, they start to get pretty brittle. You see we have that connection. We'll just start disconnecting everything. Sometimes I like to get behind the connector uh, with a pocket screwdriver. It kind of helps release it without breaking the connector. We're going to have to disconnect the vacuum line there at the fuel pressure regulator. Okay, we'll save that. Okay, something else to be careful about, these fuel line connections here are very brittle and can leak if you're not careful. You pinch these two tabs together and the line pulls off. Same with the back. I also like to disconnect the lower or the coolant temperature sensor down here because it comes off with the lower intake also.
Disconnect the vacuum hose from the booster. Actually, we need to take this fuel rail off, this bracket off right here for the EGR, and there's one more bolt right down here, a couple of 10 millimeters, about four 10 millimeters for the fuel rail that should pop off, and I believe another couple 10 millimeters for this shield right there. Okay, now the fuel rail's loose. I need to clean out all these holes for the uh, for the fuel injectors before I pry them out. I don't want anything falling down in there. So while it's still sealed up, I'm gonna blow it out with an air gun. Alright, I like to make sure that all the O-rings are good. These don't look like they need to be replaced, so we're good. It's looking a little bit easier to get our intake off. We still need to take CGR valve bracket off because it connects to this, this intake here. Just a couple more bolts. We'll get this thing off. The upper intake here, a bunch of eight millimeter bolts. There's a stud right there, it's actually a 10 millimeter. There's a couple bolts around the back side you can see there. There's also another stud over here. That was where that EGR bracket went. See that one right there? Once we take those off, we can get the upper intake off. Here's the inside of the upper intake. We're going to replace this gasket also. And we also want to inspect the actual upper intake plenum. There's the PCV tube. Make sure this plenum where these coolant holes are right there are okay. And this one looks good. Because the EGR comes in right there and it's really hot. I like to use some kind of fluid evacuation device to suck the coolant out. Makes for a lot less cleanup later. Our 
hidden bolt in there. Special hose clamp pliers make these a lot easier. You can also use channel locks if you want, but nice thing is you can lock that hose clamp open. Makes it easier to just hold it and then you just unlock it to release it. Get a pick tool underneath. All right, here's where it gets tricky. Everything else has been in metric on this engine, except for, I guess, maybe these were actually uh, 5 16ths, but 8 millimeters is the same. These right here are not 10 millimeters. They're actually 3 8 And if you use a 10 millimeter on them, you may round them off. But if you use a 3 8 inch, then you're good to go. I'm going to just grab all these bolts. Once I lift up the intake, I'm going to lift it up from this side because over here we still have this elbow. However, I'm just going to slide the intake out of the elbow and hopefully not have to get a new one. If you do, they're like 10 bucks, something like that. They're not very expensive, but just give it a tug. Okay. You see the elbow that I took it out there? Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more content like this, please hit subscribe and uh, I'll get more content up as soon as I can. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section. I'll answer them back.